oversharing can bring people together or push people away. So I'm going to talk about that for a minute and it's a good one. So let's make it a group effort. When I say oversharing, what happens to you? How do you feel? What is it? Define it, etc. Hi, Mark Jones. Nice to see you. What does oversharing mean to you? Some influencers, you'll see hashtag vulnerable posts when they're going to overshare. So I'm going to do lots of it. Hi, Aurelia. There's an appropriate way and an inappropriate way to do everything. There's an appropriate way, a really powerful way to overshare. And it can be in pursuit of your healing and other people's healing and having a good connection, really knowing that person's got your back. And it can also be toxic. And I'd love to help people decipher. So I'm gonna talk about both and then give you a challenge. Anybody want a challenge? Pop a 55 in the chat if you would like a challenge for your mental, physical, financial, spiritual, relational health. Actually, let me start with a story. I was just walking here. Pop a 44 in the chat if you are quite stubborn. If you think you know, and there's a part of you out to prove it in the world. And again, that can be divine and that can be toxic. Depends on how healed we are. So I'll tell you the story to start. Do you know what a portion is? I don't know if that translates in the States, for example, a portion. So here's some crisps or chips and I'll give you a portion of it, part of it, right? In the whole. So when I was about five, my mum tells the story of we were out to dinner with my family and I wanted to, no, I'll order for myself, I said. So the wait, waitress came and I said, I'll have a portion. And I thought I was a big girl. And what I meant was a portion of chips, a portion of fries. So I was doing it. However, I was a little bit uninformed so that it didn't make any sense to the waitress. And of course, everybody laughed at me. So I got attention. I didn't get the respect that I was after. So I was just walking to my apartment just now and thinking, hmm, 45, I think that's how old I am, years later, I've done it for myself in a healthy way. You know, you may have seen it, Papa 40, if you've seen this beautiful sort of sketch, and it's got two little creature things, and one of them has a band, and it says happiness. And the other creature in this meme says, how did you get that? And the creature with the happy says, I made it for myself. Greetings to you, Sally. Papa 55 in the chat, if you would like to make happiness for yourself. Because my dad used to say, nobody is a self-made man, no one. And what he meant by it is, we all have a helping hand somewhere. Even if that helping hand is someone who has blocked you, hurt you, etc. Do you agree? Pop before 50 in the chat, if you would agree. So I'll go into a little bit more depth about what I mean by it. Is in my view, pop a two if this makes sense to you or you agree. By all means, right, if you don't, um, that the life path we have starts often with corruption at the beginning, where we learn not to showcase our vulnerability. I don't want that. I do want that. I love you. Come closer. I miss you. All that stuff. We learn to put a lid on it. Don't be vulnerable. It's ugly, people don't like it, blah, blah. And then, in your way, you have a complete and utter meltdown, hideous time, at some point about middle age. Anyone been there? Hello, Marcel, you beautiful being. Papa 51, if you've been there. His life has given you, in my opinion, I'll tell you mine, you tell me yours if you choose. A very aggressive nudge that says, 
something is wrong and what you've been doing to manage it ain't working for you anymore. Relationship-wise, financially, etc. Oh, Bill, that's nice. You're tagging people. Thank you for that. Ask a question whilst we're live, by all means. So, proper one, if you're like me, is in the beginning, you want to do it for yourself. You wanted people to be proud of you, acknowledge you and your independence and you and your greatness and love you for it, warts and all. And then kind of you got corrupted by life and people in it. <laughs> and then you had a breakdown of epic magnitude or maybe you're still waiting for the rock bottom one. We all have it, I promise you, everybody. And then if you choose, you get it right. You move into the divine from the toxic, basically. We have a toxic feminine and a toxic masculine and a divine feminine and a divine masculine. Basically, listening to your heart, being pure with it, healing, or being reactive, dismissive, victim, poor me, all that stuff. You can be a big help to all these lovely ladies and men, Bill, <laughs> apparently, with your help, obviously. Proper one, 11, if you've tried, emphasis on the try, to better yourself and you've just nearly got there and then something's messed it up. I did very similar to what I'm doing now a few years back and I face planted. I had a piece of it was missing. Anybody know what that was? Because it will be the same for you. The piece that was missing for me that made me go, oh gosh, back to the start. Knowing a bit more, however, I still need another nudge, another kick in the head, another opportunity for growth and expansion. Rather than poor me, why don't I have enough thing? Oh, <laughs> thanks, Bill. Brilliant, I get you now. You taught me so much, Poppy. Thank you, Annabelle. So this is my point, and that's why I'm going to overshare. I work with a lady, and she says, can I overshare? And then does, and it's perfect, because it brings us closer. She's telling me human, very vulnerable stuff. Can you see how when we do it, the overshare, I'm being sarcastic, because it's not actually oversharing. If it's done healthily, it's connecting. Do you get that? Yes, yes, no, no. And then there's oversharing where we give too much, we expose too much to the wrong person in the wrong way. And it's not wrong, however it hurts, it backfires. And then it becomes this kind of standoff, embarrassing, shaming, whatever thing, because it's unhealed. One is in pursuit of connection, healing, you know, trust, sharing, inviting, and the other is us pushing our stuff into other people because it's uncontained and we haven't befriended it yet. Hey, Caroline. So here's the thing. Does anyone agree with sally -Ann? Don't we give ourselves too much of a hard time and not enough kindness? Does anyone else agree? I do. Pop a 10 in the chat if you agree with Sally. Absolutely. And in my view, we do that i.e. not giving ourselves enough love because we haven't learned it. It's narcissistic in our culture. So we get it off again. Toxic, divine. So for me, when I wanted to do it for myself when I was little and I was just learning and I got it wrong, opportunity for growth versus now when I got it right for now, for where I am now, all, always I can improve, believe me. <laughs> And the people really close to me who've earned the privilege to be that close to me get to feed back and go, Poppy, mm -mm, or you're off there, or that's great, etc. Put a five in the chat if you could do with more of those people. People who you have a friendship and it's in the vault. They have your back without agenda. You trust them because they're that close in your inner circle that they can see everything. 
and you share everything and you trust them with what you offer and it is a divine privilege and a pleasure for them to be that close to you and vice versa. So I say this as an overshare to be vulnerable, to connect us and you get to do you, you get to do what you want with it. Where oversharing, in my view, is inappropriate is when it's used to manipulate other people. And what I mean by that can be conscious or unconscious. Pop up 55, 56 in the chat. If I say numbers because we can relate that way. Pop up 56 in the chat. If you know someone, and it might even be you because we do this, who overshares in a manipulative way, and it's not conscious for a lot of people, long story as to why and how we get conscious namely if you do that it triggers me so stop doing it that's manipulative and toxic and it's inappropriate overshare I so stop doing what you're doing so i can feel my feelings right as i say all emotions are valid please express them however we get to learn how to express them and it's not to manipulate yourself is to heal so you can express them in a way that connects you with other people, not pushes them away and hurts you some more. Do you get it? Pop a 58 in the chat if you get what I mean. So here's an overshare in a positive divine way, and obviously I'll get it off because I'm human. Bipolar, psychotic. I used to teach in universities, psychology. I do, I do it more for myself now. I had a practice on Harley Street in London, which is very prestigious. And basically you need to be either minted or very good at your job to do it there or both. <laughs> Truth. Um, bulimia, addictions, abusive, very, relationships, broke, bankrupt. What other poor me stories? Lost my house, lost my partner, lost my friends, boo-hoo me, hurt my brother desperately with my bullshit. Anybody identifying? Anorexia, oh gosh, what else? Just hideous behavior toward myself primarily. And of course, where does all that come from? Because it didn't just happen with me coming out the womb, little Miss Sicko in my head, did it? Where did that come from? Thank you, Annabelle. Pop in the chat, your stuff. It's an overshare where I'm unapologetic about it because all of that has made me who I am. And in my mind, in my way, because we're all different, my passion, vision, mission is to be able to help protect and educate other people with my badness and madness. Thank you for sharing, Marcel. Do you get me that, Papa 44, if you get me, that if we learn how to have our own back, i.e., if someone in this feed goes, eh, she's horrible, mm, you're a mess, that's about them. That's about them not liking vulnerability and that's nothing to do with me, it's not my thing. Someone said to me a few years back, you're full of yourself on here. And it wasn't until after the live I saw it. However, I came back on and without, I was in no way being funny, I thanked her to notice that I'm full of myself. It's taken me a long time and a lot of money blood, sweat and tears, being behind bars in many different ways to be full of myself so I can give from that overflow. Because when we're not full of ourselves, we're lacking in some way and desperately trying and craving and screaming for love in the wrong places usually. Because until we're full up of our own love, we cannot attract it because we attract what we are. Does this make sense? So the point is, on paper, I shouldn't really be functioning with all of that stuff. <clears throat> so how am I functioning? A lot of healing, a lot of mentoring, a lot of therapy drugs. <laughs> Probably the worst, it had to get to really bad. And some of you know the story and I'll be quick about it, is I had about 400 pills in my stomach. I'd taken an overdose. And I was looking in the mirror and I was a bit blanked out because I was very depressed and not sane. I wasn't sane. We're not sane when we want to do that stuff. And I sort of heard this noise back at me, which was, well, you could just before you die. Have a look at what you're doing to make you so unhappy. 
namely tolerating horrible behaviour from other people, letting myself be used and abused by other people, eating terrible food, not looking at my health, pointing the finger at everyone else. I know how to solve your problems. Meanwhile, I'm suicidal and not eating and so on. And I thought, oh, whoops, I haven't tried that properly yet. And I vomited a lot and obviously got well and here I am. We have a choice. So I kind of said to you that probably, I don't know, 56 people live now. Mm. 20 of you may have had quite a few of those experiences. Pop a 20 in the chat if you've had quite a few of those experiences that I'm talking about. Crippling anxiety, depression, suicidal depression, mental health problems, all of that. And about mm, nine of you have really been where I've been. Psychotic, in a hospital, being held down, threatened, all the bullshit, horrible stuff of the high end. And the irony, of course, of it is I taught and used to do therapy and group therapy and so on in psychiatric facilities with very ill people. And then suddenly I'm in there as a patient and that was comedy gold. However, I knew the system. And equally, like my partner said years ago, he said, when you're well enough, you won't do this full time. I'm very good at it. Those are my people that are really, really mad, disturbed ones. I'm really good at it because I understand it and I've healed from it. However, we become our environment and the people in it. Papa 57, if you know that, that the people you're around and the environments you tolerate, which is not, it happens to me and they make me feel this way. You become those things because they're your major influencer. You're immersively involved in something. So we can't not become it as that kind of lie down with dogs, get up with fleas thing. That's why I went mad, because I was around madness all the time. And that wasn't on my patients. That was on my inability to know boundaries, moderation, and all the adult stuff. Can you see, does it make sense? Pop a three in the chat. If for those of you that resonate here, that an overshare like that, whilst probably a bit in your face, the intention is honourable and to do with connecting us consciously and unconsciously, ironically, if you can do that, to help you see that it is possible to stand and do well and have your own back and get what you like and do it yourself. If we keep going and are disciplined and consistent with doing it and being very discerning. This is the key piece that really is on you and your challenge if you want to take it up, is if you want to be real and happy, because people who are fake and cover it up are not happy, I promise you, none of them. If you want to find a way of being real, connecting with people, feeling safe, being in tribe, with people who do have and do know they have the privilege of being in your company and they respect it. We get to discern who is worthy of my trust and my realness and to what degree. And if it goes wrong and you overshare and it's too much, you have your own back because you know about self-care and love and learning and being a sort of warning and an inspiration staff. Does it make sense? Hi, mum. <laughs> you taught me a lot of what I know. Thank you for that. Are you with me? Proper 60 if you're with me. So the sort of ultimate goal in my view is to learn discernment, who's worthy, to heal so you can see it because we can't see other people when we cannot see ourselves. It's not possible. We're so full of our stuff that we're pushing it on. Oh, you don't trust me. You don't like me. You don't love me. Blah. Because we do it. Are you with me? We need to heal. We need to learn the vault. If I tell you something, obviously we're on a Facebook Live. <laughs> If I tell you something, it's between you and I, and it's my story to tell, not yours to tell someone else. However, in this instance, tell who you like, because the intention is to help us heal, because I am totally shameless about my madness and badness, because I'm learning from it to do better. 
we have to learn self-protection and boundaries. Like the lady that it was her intention, I think, to attack me online and say, you're full of yourself. My way of dealing with it is, thank you. <laughs> and she probably, if she saw it, would have hated me for that because it didn't hurt me. And I imagine that was her intention because she would have seen my vulnerability and my proudness of my health and seen it as narcissistic, I imagine, because she won't allow herself to feel good about herself. Does this make sense? Not always coming from a bad place to share. Exactly. So I'm human, I get it wrong frequently. And again, I'm very grateful for what I've done and my friends have done to be able to feed back to me and go, uh-uh, wow, <laughs> get some help, Poppy. And I do my best. So if it's useful, please share the video. And equally, it's the last day, I think, today and tomorrow. Tomorrow's July 4. Irony on irony. Independence Day. My word, has that become flipping ironic? So how about you do you Independence Day your way and let yourself come out of your shell a little bit and find more tribe? So on the 6th, tomorrow, end of Independence Day, Early bird is no longer available for the masterclass if you'd like to join us. It's going to be good, I swear. And or have a look at the other programs if now is the time for you. And if it isn't, then consider it for next time. Okay, big love. Nice to see you. So which program is best to start, Rebecca? Maybe because of the money investment and you're not, you know, fully in yet. Maybe come to the masterclass and you can watch the replay for 24 hours. In case you missed it or something, life happens, or you don't want to get up at 3 a.m. in Australia or whatever, maybe start there because it's less money to invest and less time. And if you like it, then we've got lots and lots of other things that maybe then you can trust or feel that it's right for you. Otherwise, dive right in, get on the waiting list for the PATH six week immersion program. I laugh because it is so good and very confronting. And we've got a lot of brilliant people to support you to do it. We've got Unapologetic You, which is a monthly masterclass, and you're very welcome to do that. And you can work with me privately if you choose. And we've got wonderful Marcel here, who's a senior coach, she's in the feed here. She also works with people individually, etc. So you're very, very welcome. Send in love. Bye, Mom. <laughs>